Hey friend, welcome to my podcast, The Fit Soul. I'm your host, Amy Ramsey. In this podcast, we will be discussing soul-filled strategies to unleash your confidence, increase your energy, and all the things healthy lifestyle. If you're a Christian woman who is ready to reach your God-given potential, walk worthy of your calling with abundant joy and energy, girlfriend, you are in the right spot. I mean, you only have one life to live. You might as well maximize it. Buckle in and thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the Fit Soul Podcast. I'm so grateful you are here. My name is Amy Ramsey. I am your host. I am a follower of Jesus. I am a health and wellness coach and also a certified high performance coach. And my prayer, my hope, my goal is to help you move forward in your life and how to overcome doubt and distraction and get into that forward momentum. My mission is to walk worthy of my own calling and to powerfully use my voice to help other women walk worthy. So I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. This week, the episode is part two on how to overcome doubt and distraction. I know these two enemies delay all the things that you want to be doing in your life. Maybe it's with your health and wellness goals. Maybe it's with moving forward on a business plan. Maybe it's with finances. Maybe it's in relationships, how you're showing up in relationships. However, you are uh, experiencing doubts and distractions in your life, it ain't good, right? (laughs) So last week, I shared with you the step one of uh, every life shift begins with a mind shift. And and step one was your perspective. And, And taking a look at that, we talked a lot about identity. And we talked a lot about my framework of just how do we um, know that we're hearing from God. Jesus says, my, my sheep know my voice. And um, are we doubting what he's told us to do over and over again? Are we moving forward? He's like, here, I've told you to do this. And kind of a framework. So if you missed that episode, go back and listen to the one previous to this one. But I'm going to jump right into today's title. So what I, what I, what I was sharing last week is that I had this culmination of a whole bunch of big successes all at one time in my health. And this was based on um, some some functional labs that test my cortisol level, my adrenal, and uh, just also biofeedback. I was feeling better, but it is showing some different, the imbalances that I used to have compared to now. It was amazing. And it was a definite turn for my health in this whole midlife thing. Um, And I also finished up a challenge, a 30-day challenge, dropped some weight and and walked other people through this challenge and watched them just create healthy habits and lose weight as well. It was just really exciting, you know, health and wellness to be optimized. But my podcast hit some some new ranks and ratings and scores, and that was exciting. My coaching practice, I've, I've launched something new in my coaching practice. I've launched a new skincare line in addition, kind of some midlife uh, anti-aging types of things. And they're all hitting these great successes. And it just was like, wow. I, I just was left at the end of the week just celebrating. And I was thinking through, how could I help someone else experience this. And uh, so this is kind of that framework in, wow, all of this happened. What could help somebody else move forward? What, how could I help them with a few ideas that would help, help them to have a, a more joyful outcome in their life with success of achieving their goals and knowing that they can do it. Maybe it's even in their health and wellness because I know a lot of people get just like really discouraged and stuck. And that's where the enemy wants us is in that place of discouragement, of doubt, of delay, of distraction, instead of optimized and moving forward. And so understanding your perspective of who you are and what God's calling you to do 
and moving and going in that, like starting with the end in mind. So it was about perspective. This week, I want to share with you three more points. We're going to wrap this baby up. All right. So the next step is to partner with faith. I had to stop each step of the way because I understand the fear cycle. I understand how scary it is to step out of the fear, to step out of the self-doubt because you never feel ready. And that's what I've learned in moving forward in life is that I can stay in doubt or I can just do it messy, (laughs) take messy action and just go. But the power of partnering with faith, if you kind of think about it like this, in fact, in my coaching practice, talk about two main guiding emotions, love or fear. And when we're operating from the perspective of God is love, that's who he is. And that's the character of who he is. And he calls us to walk in by faith. And faith is not being able to see it. Faith is, it hasn't happened yet. But when we partner with faith, like, okay, I can't see it. It hasn't happened, but this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Then it changes how I'm going to operate and move forward. There was a, last week on the, on the podcast, I was like, there was a scripture. I can't remember. It's in Proverbs, but I've got it ready today. And it's Proverbs 4, 26, no, 25 and 26. And it says, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left and remove your foot from evil. So that idea of operating, moving forward, activated, Faith requires you to continue to move and move forward. It requires a different level of trust in God. Your confidence isn't in yourself. It's in God and who he is. It's moving forward because someone needs you to move forward and get unstuck. Or maybe you were like me. Recently, I was at a place to where I knew there was a next level unlock and I was holding myself back. It was like there was this kind of like a glass bubble around me and I could see through it and I knew that there was uh, this unlock that needed to happen so I could bust through where, where I was seeing and get to the next level. And that was a little bit of a scary place. My vision was too small. My faith was too small. And so I started to really get back to a place of operating from vision. And it led me to a place of imagination and expanding what I think. So... Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask, think, or imagine. So now I'm like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I imagining abundance? Ask, think, or imagine. Like I started to really contemplate this verse. All right, I know what I'm called to do. I know that I'm doing these things and I want to do them with excellence. But am I imagining it too small? Am I even imagining or am I just operating in the, the reality of what I see? So I was kind of challenged by that. And I want to challenge you too in that. Like, <laughs> Let me challenge you. Are you operating in what you can see or what you can't see? Are you partnering with faith on your endeavors? Are you partnering with faith on your health and wellness goals? Are you so used to seeing whatever you've been seeing for the longest time that you can't see past that anymore? For us to 
it is, it's powerful when we engage our imagination. And like, this isn't new age. I just read to you the scripture. This is not new age. The scripture says, without a vision, the people perish. And there is a difference between vision and imagination. According to the Houghton Mifflin American Heritage Electronic Dictionary, <laughs> the word imagination means the process or power of forming a mental image of something not real or present. Now, vision is defined as a mental image produced by the imagination. So you cannot have vision without imagination. And while while these words are kind of used interchangeably, focusing on imagination, the ability to see what isn't present and sometimes when we think about imagination, we think, well, that's for children. But it's, it's not. So I want to encourage you to get to that next level success, that next level of what God's calling you to do, to have that breakthrough, the, that glass ceiling that you, you feel in your soul there's something more there, and it's, you want to access it. It's going to start with your imagination of how are you seeing yourself. And so this point is to uh, partner with faith and to partner with God in your processes, of course, but to partner in faith and to step into a place of imagination, to step into that place of vision. Take that time to visualize you with your health and wellness at its highest level optimized. Losing that weight that you kind of didn't think was possible. Visualize your success in your business. Visualize your success with the important relationships in your life that matter most. Visualize your success as you're stepping up in different roles of leadership. Visualize what that looks like. Partner with faith. All right? Number three is harness the power of hope. When life We're in the drudgery, we're in the grind, it can start to feel hopeless. In fact, I was speaking with a friend who is a therapist who is um, maybe ready to shift careers because of how depressing it is. And she, she was just really interesting. She said, some people I have been counseling for years and they're just still in places of trauma, and they're not moving forward. And so counseling and coaching are very, 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 very different. Coaching, you take a client where they are, and you move them forward. Counseling is you take the patient and take them back to move forward. Now, I think counseling is great, but also I think it's 180 bucks a pop, and sometimes, and this, this girl isn't, the lady I'm talking about is not, this is not who she is, but they don't mind you staying stuck. They make more money as long as you don't move forward. And after a while, we can lose hope. We can forget what hope feels like. And bless her heart, she was just like, I, this is discouraging, it's depressing, and, and life was just feeling really, really hard. And I, I had to call her. I'm like, I, I called her this morning. I'm like, I got to share with you this. Don't ever lose hope. May, may you never lose hope. Hopeful expectation. Like every corner you turn around, God's goodness is chasing after me. If we lose sight of God's goodness, we're going to lose sight of hope. The essence of who God is is good. And I was sharing with her what my friend, my 13-year-old friend who is now dancing at the feet of Jesus in heaven taught me was the power of hope. In Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, of plans to prosper you and plans to give you a hope and a future. She sat with cancer, a terminal illness, And quoted that scripture time and time again. And that's who she was until she transitioned to heaven. And she taught me about the goodness of God. 
She taught me what hopeful expectation meant. We can so quickly lose our hope. And I pray today that you're encouraged with hope. Part of this is training our mind. It's training our minds. Well, our bodies are everything toward godliness. As it speaks of in Timothy. And Philippians talks about our mind. Governing our thoughts. And what does, what does that mean? Our, our perceptions are shaped by how we're thinking. And in Philippians 4, it talks about rejoicing in the Lord always. He is near. And what do we think about? He says rejoice always. Like really hopeful expectation. A place of rejoicing and joy and choosing that. In our lives, this is a fruit of the spirit, but it also produces energy in your life. Learning how to govern your thoughts on the things that are lovely and pure and true and noble and praiseworthy. Think on these things. Meditate on these things. When we meditate and rehearse the trauma, the struggles, the doubt, the dis- you know, all of the things that are kind of whoo, weigh us down, we lose that beauty of hope. So in that, harness the power of hope. All right. The last thing that I want to share that I believe that really helped me. So let me just recap those things that we were talking about is number one, perspective. Gain perspective. Number two, partner with faith. Number three, harness the power of hope. And number six, the last one is Embrace the path of process. Every success in your life is going, to ta- is going to be harder than you had ever anticipated. The struggle is real. Every success that you will experience, I'm going to speak that over you, is going to require more of you right now, maybe that you haven't even accessed yet. For you to go that next level, it's going to require more fortified thinking on your end. Consistency in your actions and a commitment to keep going, even though you don't feel like doing it. Here's the problem. (laughs) I'm just going to like lay this one out. I've been in this space helping women for a long time. And I'm just going to speak really, if you don't mind, can I just like cut to the chase? Part of the reason why you haven't experienced that next level is because you keep quitting. You don't stay consistent. Let's just be really real, right? Been there a thousand times. We want it, but we're not actually putting in the action. It's a process. We want things instantaneously. I was sharing with you the, the struggles with my health and how I was really determined to take my health to the next level. And my health to me, I've always valued that. This is something that is my wheelhouse, something that I've, I've taught women for years. And my nutrition and my fitness have, for the most part, they're on point. Usually way more on point than most people, okay? I'm not trying to brag. It's just, it's part of who I am. It's part of what I do. Part of the habits that I have built in my life for years and years. But I had to get to a place where I dealt with my emotional health at a different level. And that was hard. And I knew it was going to be a process. And I just allowed the process to happen. I didn't expect an overnight success. I didn't expect two months success. In fact, when we did a retest on my labs, it was six months later. And I was like, if that doesn't show anything, I'm still committed to this process. Because that transformation process is, it requires, it demands consistency. It demands commitment. A lot of, We have goals, but what is that James Clear saying? Um, Successful people do consistently what others do occasionally. So I want you to think about in your own life, where are you occasionally 
putting in the action and you're not achieving your goals versus consistently putting in the action to achieve your goals. Where? Where in your life? Like get really real with yourself. Ask yourself these questions. That 1%, the ladies in our, the Walk Worthy Mentorship, which is, oh my goodness, this is my favorite place to be. And um, in that program, I combine the word of God along with these high performance habits to move you forward. But one of the high performance habits is productivity. You've got to overcome the distractions, but how do you do that? You get laser focused and have clarity around what do you need to do? What do you need to do for your health? What do you need to do to grow your spiritual disciplines? What do you need to do to um, move forward in stronger, healthier relationships, to move forward in the things that God's put in front of you? What do you do? What are the actions that you take in outlining that and move forward? All of it requires and usually demands a new level of you that's there. You just got to access her. And she doesn't want you to access her. (laughs) She wants you to stay comfortable. But that's not filling your soul. So honor the hard. Honor the struggle. Stay committed to the process. And those successes will come. I pray, friend, that this has blessed you. If you want to know more about my Walkworthy community, you can go to walkworthy.thefitsoul.com. You can check out the show notes before. It's a v- very affordable um, Christian high-performance life coaching uh, group that will help to move you forward. You get daily coaching from me around the habits that I believe are the performance habits that God wants us to have in our life to keep us grounded, but also to keep us focused on Him and also pursuing excellence in all that we do, walk and worthy of our calling. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much. I would love it if you would share this this, uh, episode to your stories on Instagram. Tag me so I can see it, and I will definitely retag you. And walk worthy of that calling that's inside you. Ephesians 4.1, Paul says, I urge you to walk worthy of the calling that is inside of you. Walk worthy. You've got to push past your fears. You've got to push past the self-doubt, the insecurity. You've got to overcome the distractions. And again, those four steps that we've talked about over the last two weeks are um, you've got to renew your perspective, partner with faith, harness the power of hope, and embrace the path of process. All right, friend, love you so much. Thank you for being here. All right, have an amazing day. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm so honored you come back every week and that you share the Fit Soul podcast with your friends and family. Every time you share my podcast on Instagram or Facebook, I do a little happy dance. Make sure you subscribe to the Fit Soul Podcast, where you'll never miss an episode. You can go to Podcast, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode release. And just know, I truly love bringing you excellent content and great guests to provide you motivation and faith inspiration to help you walk worthy. And one of the ways you can help me is to go and leave the Fit Soul Podcast a review. If you have just a moment, would you please go over and leave a review for the Fit Soul Podcast? Thank you again. I love you. And here is your reminder. You are worthy. Until next time. Bye-bye.